This is a Magni 3 Plus and Modi Multibit setup. And this is an Asgard 3 and Bifrost 2 setup. Now in the past I've reviewed each of these components and say, for example, compared the two different amps and how they perform and the two different DACs and how they perform. But I've never actually compared an entire setup. So what's the difference between the smaller Magni 3 Plus and Modi Multibit setup and the $550 more expensive Asgard 3 and Bifrost 2 setup? That's what I aim to find out. A quick overview for those of you who haven't seen my reviews of each of these items. The Magni 3 Plus is, along with the Magni Heresy, their latest $99 amp. And it's very good value considering it uses basically a cut down speaker circuit. And it has features such as match transistors, which you normally see in high end products. And the result is something that measures very well and performs pretty good, but is somewhat limited by the fact that it is wall wart powered and doesn't have a very large power supply. The Modi Multibit is the cheapest Multibit DAC in their line, and while it is $150 more expensive than the regular Modi, this is the result of using industrial R2R chips, which are normally used in things like medical and military applications for controlling motors, and they have to be very precisely made components, and as such cost a lot of money. The whole setup here costs around $350. On the larger side, we have the Asgard 3, which is the latest version of their very original product. Now, unlike the original Asgard, which was a pure Class A amp, this is a Class AB amp. Although, for the most part, most people playing back music with through headphones will only have it operating in Class A mode. Now, the problem, of course, with Class AB amps, and these are the Magni 3 Plus is, of course, a Class AB amp, is that at a certain power level, as the amp drifts into Class AB mode, it loses linearity. It starts to get transconductance droop. They've eliminated this with their new continuity circuit, which gives a linear power all the way through from class A, class AB out to maximum power output. The Bifrost 2 is the latest version of their original DAC. It is multi-bit only, and instead of using the 16-bit chip that's in the Modi multi-bit and the previous Bifrost multi-bit, they have upgraded it to the 18-bit version, making for better sound quality. And it also includes a number of unique features, including the ability to upgrade the DAC by removing panels from the back of the chassis without having to open up the top. And this means it can be readily upgraded by the user in the future without any danger. It also has the ability to have its firmware upgraded via a micro SD card. All in all, people are calling it a mini Yggdrasil as the performance is really excellent and only a little bit behind the Yggdrasil in many respects. It also includes Shit Audio's Unison USB, which eliminates a lot of the issues from USB by instead of using a regular USB chip, it, a completely custom controller has been programmed with all the USB features required and as well as double isolation on the circuit board, this means that any noise and interference can't, in, can't get through to the DAC and the analog outputs. So the two pieces of music I, I want to use as examples for the, the difference in, in sound between the, the smaller and the bigger system were for a start is Emmylou Harris track with Where Will I Be off her Wrecking Ball album. And the second one, just glancing at the computer, was Jar Glory by Third World. Now I wasn't really expecting to be listening to reggae, but actually there was a, it was a, it's a live uh, track and it came up in kind of my random playlists and actually it's pretty good. It's pretty... Uh, uh, it gives a good sense of space of the live performance and that was the difference between how that space was presented it was really noticeable between the uh, smaller Modi Mag Magni rig and the bigger Asgard Bifrost rig. To start with uh, the good old HD6XX or HD650s as they were known, they were pretty revealing of the differences between both rigs. It, it tends to be voltage swing being that they're, they're higher impedance headphones that, that kind of makes the difference and for example Jar Glory was you could I mean it was it sounded nice but it felt like kind of squashed in a little bit like the whole the the whole stage was kind of squashed in your head a little bit whereas if you jumped I jumped up to the Asgard Bifrost rig everything opened up and, and became kind of more easy going and, and relaxed and all the kind of more better new the nuances of the track came out more in their individual spaces much much more clearly than they did from the, the smaller rig. 
It was a kind of similar story with the good old uh, K7XX, you know, based on the old K701 with with the, um, probably the 64th anniversary edition, for as far as I'm aware. And but it wasn't quite; they weren't quite so clear as the HD6XX were in in delineating, you know, everything. If anything, actually, they sounded a little bit kind of fatiguing to listen to after a while. And I do know that there are there are measurements out there which show that over many hours of of use that they're they're level of distortion goes down so i should probably put more hours on them so i can listen to them more but again it wasn't quite so noticeable also with the good old verum ones the differences weren't quite so readily noticeable as i had expected them to be given their kind of slightly insensitive planar headphones also i tried uh, mr speaker's ether 2s a similar kind of story there even they're a little bit of a darker headphone and that kind of space that the, the better rig could give didn't come come out quite as clearly with the with the uh, you know the original pads on there it still was noticeable same thing again say for example just like with uh, the hd6xx say emmy lou harris in that in the particular track she's in you hear her and you hear some drums and then you hear you know the, the everything else in the space around it felt like with when you jumped up from the smaller rig to the bigger one emmy lou harris became more distinct in the track like where she was versus everything else and there's a kind of slight sense of background sound in that recording and it felt like from the smaller rig that the the background kind of sound was was merged in with Emmylou Harris whereas from the bigger rig Asgard and Bifrost 2 then that was kind of she was more separate and you can hear very clearly everything where everything was more so in the kind of space that she was being recorded in so same thing again with everything, Hi-Fi Man Sundaras, much the same kind of story. It, can, it really made it kind of clearly that, uh, you know, the, uh, the the lower amount of amplification available, the slightly less clear uh, DAC available compared to the Bifrost. And the Bifrost 2 kind of even isn't at its kind of limit of capability with the Asgard 3. It can still go higher. So, but uh, the, the main takeaway was that the difference between not just an amp and an amp or a DAC and a DAC, but a whole system was was noticeably more clear with tracks, with everything kind of just becoming more spacious. It didn't feel like, the, the little Magni 3 Plus felt like it was kind of forcing the music through, um, and it couldn't quite do it. Whereas the big Asgard 3 and Bifrost 2 rig felt like, ah, oh, it was much more like kind of relaxed and easygoing and spacious and the this the, the finer details of the music came out clearly from their place in the kind of sound stage so that was the main thing between all of them and, and interestingly the consistency between different headphones it was is still quite clear even with you have headphones that require better voltage swing for better performance and planar headphones which generally require more current and more power. And although I have to say here, I don't listen that loud. I probably wasn't getting much over 80 decibels or even 80 to 90 decibels, turning the volume up for a bit of louder listening. I think that's the that's one of the, of course, the key thing I always say in all my videos, if listening too loud, you will damage your hearing and you can't fix it if you do listen at excessive volume levels. That being said, so that means it that for me eliminates a lot of the differences between amps. But even if you feel that the differences between, say, a smaller rig and a bigger rig aren't so noticeable, and on some maybe com heavily compressed pop, you probably might not notice the difference where everything's kind of mashed together anyway. On more better on better recordings, you'll hear kind of more finer detail, especially where the music starts to get busy. But all the same, yeah, with a lower vol listening level, uh, the amps are kind of not being strained at all. It's only if, yeah, I, if I say plugged in, of course, Hi-Fi Man Susfaras, which I've got behind me, if I plug it into this, then it absolutely runs out of steam in no time and the bass just doesn't come through. Whereas the Asgard 3 with its continuity circuit, that delivers the uh, the power readily all the way up to maximum volume, which was pretty impressive. So if you probably, although I don't expect someone to use Sus Susvaras with a, uh, you know, $6,000 Susvaras with, with such a rig, it's some, a few people out there may go for the old uh, HE6 from Hi-Fi Man or the new HE6 SE, which are very insensitive, and there you do need a good amount of power to get the most out of them. So I hope for people who are interested in going from a smaller rig to a bigger rig, it's a big difference, $550, or it's $700 if you're only going for a Modi Magni without the multi-bit option. That's a big jump up, but there was still a very noticeable jump. And, if, and again, if you do feel the differences when you compare things, say, to meat are not so great, they do add up to me over time, Whereas those little subtle differences, they may, may be like A being, oh, there's a little bit of a difference here. Over time, to me, that adds up to a lot of difference and a lot more musical enjoyment. So again, I hope that was a helpful uh, comparison between the two rigs. And if you did like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Do you have, have you tried both rigs? Have you tried either of the products? Do you own them? 
or do you have any other comparisons you think might be a good idea? Post your comments and even constructive criticism in the, in the comments below and let me know what you think. Also, thanks to everyone who has been helping me make these videos, the people whose names you see on screen, for a little equivalent for like buying me a coffee once in a while, help support making these videos. If you'd like to become a supporter, you can get my advice anytime and uh, ask me questions and see these videos in advance and my thoughts on gear as soon as I get it. Do consider becoming a supporter. The link is in the description as well as on screen. So thanks once again for watching and I'll see you online.